What is the most underrated skill everyone should know? Write in the comments what you think about this. Enjoy the show. Story 1. Knowing when to walk away. People seem to forget that just because you're walking from an argument or situation that is dressing you out or making you increasingly upset doesn't mean you're letting them win. You're walking away to distance yourself in order to calm yourself down and then approach the subject when you and the others are calm to have a proper talk slash discussion. People usually just continue to argue, forgetting every time that it's okay to walk away and approach it later. Story 2, taking a moment for thinking, some PPL. I know I have very bad decision makers or ask dumb questions or advice. Being able to take a moment to think is a very valuable skill, and it's not very hard depending on the context of, see, I'm not saying it's not okay to ask questions, but thinking thoughtfully before you ask may answer the question. Story 3, showering in a way that gets you squeaky clean and doesn't use up all the water. Had a health teacher in ninth grade spend a class dedicated to proper showering. I didn't think it was such a big deal until I started managing people and had to deal with hygiene complaints amongst co-workers. Sheesh. And saving water is a bonus now that I own a home. Story 4. How to talk to people. I have had people think I'm an absolute idiot and can't be bothered to waste a minute on thinking about anything. However, the minute you put them in a restaurant or situation where they need to talk to people, they basically curl into a ball and sob. I get it being social is hard, but under no circumstances should you be under the impression that someone is an idiot just because they aren't book smart. I've gotten compliments in public for just making normal small talk. I've become friends with so many strangers on flights. I get free food from people sometimes and have had people's grandparents asking about me for years just by knowing how to be polite and talk with people. Story 5. Crochet I've used it more often for things completely unrelated to crochet than I have for actual crochet. Tying knots, untying knots, patience, focus, keeping track of things. Yes, these are all skills that can be learned otherwise, but they can also be learned through crochet. Please no pretentious Redditors hijacking my post saying, that's not the only way you can learn that stuff. Because I know, but it is a way you can learn that. Chill BC, you look like this. Story 6. This is an unusual one, but fall training. I took a couple judo and karate classes in college, and they both started with extensive fall and roll training. I didn't think about it at the time, but every time I have fallen since college, which is two decades at this point, afterwards I realized I fell or rolled in a way that saved me a lot of hurt. Story 7. Basic computer knowledge. I don't have it and I feel like an old person experiencing computers for the first time or something, but I'm only 19. Growing up, my family rarely ever had computers, so everything I do, including gaming, is on mobile, my iPhone. One day, my grandma sold me her old computer. I believe she bought it in 2015, and it was fun for a bit. It couldn't run a lot of games like I wanted, but it could run a few fun ones. And I liked the computer, but it got slow and laggy over time, just like my last computer I had one time when I was a kid. I don't know exactly what causes the computer to be slow, and every question I have about it leads me to more questions. Something about RAM, maybe odd storage. IDFK, every time I try to delete things on the computer, they don't delete, even when I put them in the recycling bin and empty it. I'm frustrated as hell because I want a more advanced computer, maybe a gaming one, but I'll probably somehow do the same things that made the computer so laggy, it's unusable within a few months, and then not know how to fix it. Story 8. The skill of persistence or continuing to go forward when everything is against you. Despite probability, your family, your past, your performance, your burdens and circumstances, and your potential being against you, you still continue to persevere. You do not let go, and the only thing that may stop you is death. This is a very underrated skill in today's world. Usually, we withdraw, quit, or give up quickly because we do not get immediate gratification. We lack the sheer tenacity and endurance. We like the idea of a long-term goal. But many of us will never accomplish it because our mind's stamina is almost non-existent and our attention span is even worse. We are inclined to give up as soon as something goes not according to the plan. Story 9. I've always thought that everyone who drives should learn the major car brand logos. If anything happens and you call the police to look for a vehicle, having them look for a white four-door Mazda sedan narrows it down compared to just white four-door sedan or worse, white car. Yes, there is a lot of car brands, but taking a little time to learn the logos shouldn't be too hard. Story 10 Improved Decision-Making Rather than depending on presumptions or biases, it assists you in making well-informed decisions by analyzing the available data and taking into account many viewpoints. Problem-solving Develops your capacity to dissect difficult issues into smaller, more manageable components and investigate other approaches to answers. Story 11 Changing Rotating Attires or oil changes. Y'all could save so much doing it yourself, and I don't mean in money. I know, I know. It only cost me $30, but 
You're not getting the quality stuff on the signs outside of a Walmart or Jiffy Lube, even though they buy in bulk. The oil isn't even the issue, as much as the filter as many are unbranded or basic Fram orange filters. Spend a little more on quality products and do it yourself, and that peace of mind is so much better. Story 12. My early 20s, I crashed a car through a wooden business sign and straight into a palm tree at like 45 mpg. I had no injuries or pain. I hit a traffic cone the other night and my lower back right leg hurt for several days. Granted, my suspension is modified and stiff, so I got some air off the cone, but so was my suspension in the other car, and I got a lot more than a little air off the curb, lol. Story 13. How to get reasonably fit and how to stay there. Why? There are two quotes I like to use here. What is a squat? It's getting up from a chair or off a toilet. What is a deadlift? It's picking something up off the floor. If you want to do those things for yourself into your old age, it makes sense to get good at them now. And strong people are harder to kidnap and more useful in general. I'm not the fittest or the strongest person in the world, but you know what I did today? I stopped my car and I pushed someone else's broken down car from the fast lane of a busy motorway to safety on the hard shoulder, complete with six-month-old baby in the back. If I hadn't been able to do that, who knows how that would have ended. Story 14. Purchasing postage online. The amount of people who have to stand in line waiting for others to give addresses, determine and calculate shipping is absurd. During Christmas time, there's a line of most customers who only need to drop off a package or forced to wait, creating a line that goes outside wrapped around the building. Post office stores had adopted self-help machines, but there are still many places without them. Story 15. Planning ahead. The ability to plan ahead to not just the next day but weeks or even months is not a skill everyone has. Many say they will do this or that in the future, but if they were pressed for how they plan to achieve that goal, you honestly won't get much from them. I'm not dissing those people because I'm one of them, and I struggle with this skill as well. But the few times I've actually put it into practice has helped so much with my stress, anxiety, and happiness. Story 16 Delegating it took me a while getting comfortable with the idea, but I mastered it. My work no longer has stress. Doesn't matter who you are. If it's too much for me and our projects, someone's getting some tasks so we can deliver our products. If have 10 tasks to do in one day and I see some people with only one, they are at the very least getting one additional task I know they can do while I work on the main five. Story 17. Mental math, but especially percentages. My wife always slides me the bill at restaurants because she can't do the percentages without a calculator. It's nice to be able to tip the server in 10 seconds rather than fiddling with my phone and add up my monthly expenses off paper and mentally track where I'm at. This ability doesn't make me smarter by any means. It's just something my dad was adamant that I learned to make life easier as an adult. All it takes is a few little tricks and some practice. Story 18. Emotional Regulation It's hard to overstate how important this is. If you can't effectively implement strategies for recognizing and regulating your own emotions, then you're effectively giving up control of your own life. Rather than being at the wheel, you're letting your impulsive monkey brain call the shots. And as helpful as that egotistical little bastard is at handling emergencies, aka fight or flight, it downright sucks at navigating relationships. Story 19. How to do mild research. Every time I train someone at work, they keep asking questions that are easily found, and I showed them how to find it, but then they ask again. The first time I'm asked, I will happily answer and show you how to find it yourself. The third time, I am not amused. If you don't know the answer, Google, read an article. If at work, I know you have listed recourses, just use your brain for two minutes. Try to figure it out, then you can ask. This goes for everything from how to cure ringworm to medical procedures, history, art, science. Story 20. General Research. If everyone knew how to do basic research, maybe I'd stop seeing the same stupid shit every day on my feed that's very clearly wrong. To be honest, if everyone knew how to research, college would become pretty much obsolete with information age we live in. It's going to become where a college degree is basically just a this person knows how to Google properly certification. Story 21. Basic personal finance. This includes things like budgeting, so you know where your money is going every month. Credit cards so you know not to pay just the minimum. Why charging and paying it off is a good thing, but leaving it to incur interest is bad, and how it affects your credit report. Very common misconception is leaving a balance on the card helps your credit. Credit scores, how they work, and how it helps with loans, such are car loans and mortgages. Basic tax return prep. How general W-2 income is taxed, if other types of income are taxable and how are they taxed, and what general credits deductions you have access to. Retirement saving because relying solely on Social Security, especially if you're in a younger generation, may be unsustainable. 
compounding interest, and how it's a powerful tool for saving but also a crippling burden for debt. In my opinion, the above should be a required course for all high schoolers before they graduate. Maybe even one X9 week session every year in HS just in case someone drops out, so at least they have some knowledge. Story 22. Haha, <laughs> so many things. Let me give you a list that to me is a bare minimum, but a vast number of PPL don't know how to do. Laundry. They even don't know which button to press for God's sake. Cooking. The basics, y'all. I'm talking about spaghetti, eggs, a soup, a salad, some chicken. Cleaning your house, your bedroom, your bathroom, right? Bathing right. Some don't bath as frequently as it should. Some don't wash their a-holes, BCS, they fear of being gay. Some just sprinkle some water on their sweat and dirt-soaked skin. And they expect all this shit to come off by touching once their skin. Some don't wash their legs, BCs, the soapy water drip down of their upper body, and so much more. Manners, being polite, especially when the other is impolite, have a basic understanding of human emotion and how to respond to different situations. I just feel like that the average EQ is so much lower than what I think is the bare minimum. Story 23. The difference between cluttered and dirty when it comes to keeping house and how to clean things. For example, cluttered can be having a pile of mail you haven't filed yet on the corner of your kitchen counter. It's having your clothes draped over your furniture and doors while they're air drying, and you haven't gotten around to putting them away. Cluttered can be having a pile of dishes on the counter because you're waiting for the dishwasher to finish a cycle. It can also be having piles of books stacked around your house because you don't have enough bookshelves. Cluttered can be having a bunch of cosmetics left out on the bathroom counter. Dirty is dried on food or drink, or mystery stains on the floors and countertops. Dirty is having rotting food on dirty dishes that have been in the sink for days. Dirty is having dust and grime caked on your windowsills and baseboards. Dirty is having giant tumbleweeds of pet hair accumulating in corners and under furniture. Dirty is having an overflowing garbage can. Dirty is having urine stains on and around your toilet and feces smeared in the bowl. On how to clean things, if you are an adult and live alone, don't wear outside shoes indoors and aren't spilling food and drinks a lot, you can probably get away with sweeping a couple of times per week and mopping every other week, maybe. If you have pets or children or you wear outdoor shoes inside, you need to be sweeping and mopping multiple times a week or the dirt will accumulate and become a very big job to clean once you finally get around to it. Story 24. Stopping reflexive involuntary actions from intense stimuli in non-life or death situations, like sudden flashes of anger, surprise, or even horror. I guess controlling fight-or-flight response when the situation should be anything but. Just putting an extra step or thought in between stimuli and action can mean the difference in making a big mistake or just going about your day. Story 25. Learn these skills if you truly want to make an impression. 1. Play a song on a musical instrument. 2. Make a balloon animal. 3. Learn some yo-yo tricks. 4. Hula hoop and or belly dance. 5. Hit a long drive in golf. 6. Shuffle cards like a pro. 6. Sleight of hand magic. 7. Ride a skateboard. 7. Do a bit of juggling. 8. Pop a wheelie. 9. Drive stick. 10. Water. Snow ski. Many more. Don't be an old dog. Never stop learning new tricks. Story 26. How to navigate by the North Star. You could memorize this in minutes and it could save your life. Quick background. A friend was once lost in the Mojave Desert trying to find an off-road camping site. He'd been driving for hours until night had fallen, and he was down to less than a quarter tank of gas. His cell phone was nearly dead, and he called the campsite because at that point, he just wanted directions to the nearest gas station. So I asked if he could find the Big Dipper. Yes, he could. Two of the stars from the Big Dipper can lead your eye to the North Star. Think as if you were pouring water out of the Dipper and follow that line to the next kind of bright star. That's the North Star. The highway is west of you, so keep the North Star over your right shoulder and you should reach the highway. Twenty minutes later, he called again, greatly relieved. He'd filled his tank and he was out of trouble. Once he could orient by the North Star, he could even read his site map competently. He joined us at the campsite after charging his phone. It's possible to get lost in the wilderness when you're quite close to the things you need. You just can't see them. People panic when they don't know where they are. Then bad things happen. This occurred before phones had built in GPS, but his phone battery was nearly dead. And you're Scrooge with GPS if your phone dies. So here's a couple of tutorials, Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. Story 27. Using tools and being able to interact with your environment beyond just using objects as intended, with everything around us being manufactured and having to follow safety regulations, people are slowly starting to be a little more automated in their thinking and way of interacting with everyday objects. My favorite example is people who don't have enough experience with knives in the kitchen and try and make up for it by having a bunch of single-purpose kitchen gadgets like a slap chop. 
When it comes to doing your own repairs, you may think repairing something yourself is difficult and takes forever, but with practice, it gets easier and you become faster. Your electrician and plumber are experts and professionals, but they are like everyone else, just people. If others can do it, so can you, but at your own pace. If more people fix their own appliances at home instead of just throwing them out when you just need to replace a $1 motor brush, that's quite simple to change. We'd have less waste in our landfills and oceans. It's knowledge that needs to be passed on. It used to be more common for people to do their own repairs themselves. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Be sure to write comments and share your stories.